scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results. No matter how spiritual you are, your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding. Your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen Numbers chapter 13, we are reading from verse 25 to 33. This was the encounter of Moses and the 12 spies. Listen, and they returned from searching the land after 40 days. We are reading to 33. And they went and came to Moses, these are the people now, and Aaron, and to the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word to them. Listen, and unto the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is an evidence, this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, listen, this is a mindset speaking now. Everyone's communication is a window into your understanding. You can fake it for a while, but with time you will speak your true convictions. Nevertheless, this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of God the people that dwelleth in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of Anak there the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan and Caleb said Kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was I not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said Moses as far as I'm concerned this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself I am well able say it again I am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge it didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset I can't make it. I am from Kaduna State. I am from Plateau State. I am from Benway. I am from Kogi. People from our family don't rise. It's a reflection of your understanding. 31. But the men that were up with him said, We be not able to go against the people. Why? For they are 
they've not fought oh. they, are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though we have gone through gone to search it a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature the last verse and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight the anakims never say hey grasshopper the people call themselves grasshoppers the same way you call yourself um, a weak failure the same way you call yourself all kinds of things there is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results let me tell you nobody is born with a transformed mind transformation is a spiritual investment in case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again it is nobody is transformed by default ladies and gentlemen it is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding we've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding have taught us how paradigms are formed the first way paradigms are formed are through our cultural backgrounds we come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning we've lived among people who have been poor and broke we have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things we have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of god and unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm a set of belief a plane of interpreting things your reality is interpreted by your perspective and if you do not allow the word of god alter your perspective you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine listen i don't care what physical effort you are exerting your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset there are many people who have failed before they started it was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it so they were not surprised when they failed it was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds are we together we were like grasshoppers so they call themselves the bible tells us how to think philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise do what thinking and wishing are two different things wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you will never happen in your life but thinking is constructing your mind your understanding many people do not think well they don't even think at all and if they do they think on negative things listen to me much more than your physical activity focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory are we together you were insulted growing up you probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when i read what <laughs> when i read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied so people make they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing it will give them an edge correct what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about god what do you believe about life 
you've heard me say it again and again it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or, co or commit suicide i don't think i hate myself that much ah, i understand quarreling myself but to hang yourself is um is, is quite you must be assisted by a spirit you become a reflection a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts the thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind I'm not talking of business I'm not talking of whatever just allow me to change and alter that person's mind if I never see that person in my life again I can tell you staking my life that that person will be a success regardless of what his life is at that moment now here's the reverse accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross 30,000 mark if somebody blesses you with 200,000 it will finish and return back to that range it, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an ion you know how an ion is you program it to be this hot when it gets there what happens it breaks that's it there are people who will never cross hundred thousand give them one million they will laugh only for one week that money the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way a manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are hundred thousand allocators so it's not enough to just claim and say i'm a millionaire there is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind it's like resonance in physics remember those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result don't look at the physical result under study the understanding of that man you see that you get blessed from successful people not just by benefiting from the result of their success unfortunately that's what mediocres do they are obsessed by the result the tie the shoe the watch the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the prize of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental states that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you. I teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I am there and I am real but your mental state now cannot take you there. Challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I exist, I am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding i am passionate about god exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me 
some of us are so egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me say lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon spirits it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of god does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance the demons are in a hurry to leave they mock you before you raise your hand they go knowing that their access point is still there the door is open are we together something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation there is a way africa thinks we have subsistent thinking there is a way men of god think that don't give them results there is a way they think that they get results please every time you see a man of god a system a businessman whatever commanding results don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results but if you really want to receive you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding so the bible says this let this mind permit this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 permit this mindset this thinking this construction this set of understanding to be in you that was also in christ jesus and then things will respond to you the same way they responded to jesus born around a manger still didn't matter upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me i don't know what i meant prophetically or physically he said what business do you think i can do i said none you will fail in every business you do no matter how simple it is and this is the reason it's not because you are lazy it is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default sincerity is one of the seed for greatness so you may be sincere it's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well meaning as that person is it's not if you die it's when that car will capsize don't labor to show physical results you try to buy a shoe of hundred thousand to make a statement i guarantee you your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe you'll be surprised that you never kick it on a wall but in one month the shoe will open up something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state your mind is saying it's a lie your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm something will happen i've given you an analogy again and again take a poor person take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company put him in the director's office for two weeks don't tell him anything just put him there and say you have unlimited access to this office do you know what he will do number one he's going to steal are you seeing the mindset he will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time number two he will not clean and arrange the place what can i get so things the mediocre what can i get not what can i give he will sit down watch television drink all the juice in the fridge snap himself take selfies and then try to what can i steal oh there's one carton of water if i take five nobody will know that's a mediocre that's the reason why 
he will remain where he is in two weeks he will turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rock to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan there is power when you set goals this is a renewed mind a poor man will say i beg this nigeria i don't have any father anywhere and remain there after one year he has not been able to buy a rock something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are is that true i look at myself and i look at the dimensions god wants to take me and i look at many things i do not know that is responsible for my current level of result and so i continue to search find out if i know what follow runsha lakija knows then i will be a billionaire in dollars correct listen respect results don't trivialize results results are not luck especially predictable results predictable result time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions when you see a result that is sustained it was based on laws it wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie I can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone in the wheelchair and leave the person but brothers and sisters you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace the bible never said the donkey talked forever he talked for a moment and his mouth was shut the bible never said the rod bordered forever psalm 78 verse 41 a scripture that has become a national anthem in this place it said but they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they were in the wilderness and they limited him can god make a way can god make a way can god make a way the bible says they limited him as mighty as god is brothers and sisters we can limit him through our understanding we can limit him someone met me one time and said apostle God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dick's Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market? To find out how much anointing oil is that's a proof of faith it's a sign that you know it will come faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction are we together yes let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith they are vague in their expectations vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come the Bible says give us he told you who to give number two he says this day then what our daily bread give us this day our daily bread specificity is very important in manifesting faith so that when the result comes you are sure that this is what I released my faith for is God speaking to us When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh-uh, you finished school four years ago till now. 
you can't even buy a nice jean and so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into and we keep you notice that you keep rising up and falling rising up and falling your physic you try to fake it your mindset brings you back that's what happened to many of our loved ones I've told people why fake something that can be real you don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of God the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of Jesus I may have Gary today but I will feed nations and you study the word of God and it's constructing your mind there is he that started and yet increases. there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty ah so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come you write it in the name of Jesus I have no attachment to things when God brings them money is a slave and a servant never to become a God and a master I am a giver and then you study again and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that he having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work so it's God that can make all grace abound that means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen it is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest are we together you begin to study you see the Bible says love never fails that means if there is anything that is failing in my life when I add love to it I can turn the results around so you construct your mindset let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say what are, are you the only one who is a christian what is all these things where we are talking about all of this in i beg man must walk and he said no sorry i don't speak like that again with all due respect something is happening to me say hey eh, you you better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary. They are trying to pull you back. Say the devil is a liar. Say it again. And they will pull you back and say, it's true. Let me go back, Jerry. This coin only I think you are just talking like fools. Even God knows. Well, will I lie? I'm like that. I'm, I'm not. And you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state. While people are watching football, you buy a book, 500 naira, and you sit down. When people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money, God just opens a door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, Ah, my birthday is tomorrow. Kai, will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering. Or someone can say, this is my birthday. I may not be a millionaire overnight, but let me make it the last birthday. When the, by this time, one year, I should at least be able to have options for the food I eat. We don't make that decision. We don't study. What are you doing? I'm browsing something. What, who is that? Um, somebody he, I mean very powerful is a wonderful Christian and he's speaking minded of great people say I beg I want to watch one film it just came out am, am I mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me but I'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people they are just people who manipulate the minds of people ministers are very intelligent people it takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we we're coming I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking and I said wow I said really everybody's a public speaker 
The moment you are a leader in any field, you are a public speaker. Public speaking is all about communicating thoughts. It takes intelligence, it takes psychology, it takes leadership, it takes content. Not just that God sent you and say, go to America, go to um, whatever, and then you go and stand and say, well, the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now. Don't worry, well, if you like be sleeping while I'm talking, you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes. You see, our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion. Especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of God upon your life. You must have both a sound word and intellectual balance. So that as you are communicating the word of God, there is a, a synergy with your result. Anybody that listens knows that, no, 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 this person has paid his price. I will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation. I buy the truth and I sell it not. Hallelujah. One way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says, follow them. So not everybody is worthy of being followed. It says, honor all men, but you can't follow all men. Listen, there is this African, trado African mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the bible says and david served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it i'm sent to minister to all men but i always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50. If you are within the range, age range of 15 to 50, you are within my generation of influence. Now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here, I will bless you, but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me. Is that true? because they grew with that generation if you're in ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be in ministry for a long time if you're in ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 i have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um those people are at the level of their life where they're interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say are ah, you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people I foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job i have said it again and again I'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of jesus 
you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen yes you will see it happen we may not look like it now the bible says now are we the sons of god it says and it doth not yet appear until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the holy ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving god because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Dula and Hefziba, unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. And people ask you, how are you doing it? You say, I can reproduce it again and again. It was not luck. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding. Stop complaining about the physical results you do not see. Brothers and sisters, that should be the least of your concern. Lord, deliver me from a fake life. Are we praying? Deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there. I receive the patience. I receive the patience. I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight. I will not become anointed overnight. I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small. You are a non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able, 10 times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. Hallelujah. Listen, don't listen to what I'm saying and think I'm just talking nonsense. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, you'll fail in life. Yes, you will. And you will live an angry and resentful life. Our society is full of very angry people. Do you know? One of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges, it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what? If you rejoice in your certificate, one day it will make you angry, the day you are not promoted. If you rejoice just in your husband alone, your wife alone, your child, your car, your business, all those things, they fluctuate. But it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord and again I say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say ah these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them. They understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit. You use it to draw from the wells of salvation. It's not circumstances that... Make, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Meaning when I lose joy, I lose strength. And Satan understands this, so he will orchestrate it. I thought you said you will enter a relationship by January. You even open your mouth and told people, now it's November, oh, my sister. And you just say, hi, how about God? There are many men in Koinonia now. Won't they see me? You are already responding to it. But the joy of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. I thank you. Where is the God that brought the servant of Isaac to come and meet Rebekah? 
that same God will connect me. Lord, I give you praise. Before the arrival of the man, I continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue. That the day that gentleman sees me, he will never be able to sleep again. Good preparation. What do you do while waiting for your miracle? Among many things, praise and prepare. Hmm. Praise and prepare. Is God blessing us? Yes. You will never, and I say it with all humility, you never see me putting my hand on my chin and say, Hi, life. You say, Why now? I say, Can Nigeria, you not seeing what is happening? I choose to be joyful. I choose to make merry. In my world, there is absolute peace. The world you talk about is the one your mindset created. Oh. In my world, there is peace and love and joy. Apostle, you see what is going on in this country. I know, but I know that there is a God in heaven. He was not dethroned. He's alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. Apostle, are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere? Oh, I understand that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, there is a construction. I am happy. Joy is a defense. You plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it, what you used to believe, you now stop it and throw it away. No. Be joyful. Prophesy to your neighbor. Say, be joyful. Say to another, remain joyful. Amen. Yes. When two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. So when you cannot laugh and you are happy before God, something is wrong. Oh God, I'm here again. Papa, you say, better come and answer me. What is all this thing I'm saying? Is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request? Or is it that Apostle Son is not touching my own? What is all this? I keep writing this thing. And when you, the devil says, please continue. I, I beg you, continue. You frustrate Satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them. He says, what then do I do? It's a sign you are not living in the flesh. Are we together? You get up in the morning and there's no food. And you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says, Pastor, Gary has finished though. They say it with sarcasm. Are, are you, do you have people like that around your life? Yes. They will say to me, please, prosperity confessor, Gary has finished. There is soup, but no Gary. I tell God there is already soup. Just help us with Gary. They try to mock you. But do you know mockery is a mystery? Every time, listen, every time men are mocking you, it's a sign something has left heaven. And Satan is trying to use men to stop it. Read your Bible. Every time they mocked men, when the mockery was at the apex, the result was almost arriving. When we started out in ministry, many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things. And the Lord told me, just continue to rejoice and celebrate. And hallelujah, look what he's done. And will continue to do by his grace. Make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person. Make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful. Apostle, nine o'clock my rent must be paid. My brother, anger will not pay rent. Your your annoyance will not even add to it. So you better be happy because even physically, it can make some, what is making you joyful like this? And you say, I'm smiling in the midst of the storm. I say, storm, what storm? And the person comes in. Tell your loved ones to be happy. Our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress. You see somebody 20 years old, they tell you he has BP. <laughs> Sir, what are you thinking about? I say, my life. I'm 20, I'm not in a relationship. Like, ah, are you joking? What in the world is this? What's, what's wrong with you? Listen to our character building series. Work on your mind. What did you watch? Which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience? But when you see somebody rejoicing, always happy. You come back from Koinonia, I'm happy. Somebody is grumbling in the car. You just say, well, God bless you. You arrive home, you are happy. What will we eat? Well, there may not be food. And truly, sometimes it can be painful. But Lord, I give you all the praise. How long will I keep dancing? For as long as the answer comes. Let me tell you, waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant. I will never have the privilege of having that experience. But one thing I know is that I've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child. For as soon as you travail, 
travail in joy brothers and sisters the God who promised you will bring it to pass oh. yes I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God I will hold on if I perish I perish if God said it I believe him is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am God is speaking to you is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am listen brothers and sisters hear me encourage you tonight be patient with God be patient be patient with God it didn't take you one day to build that understanding just continue with God apostle it's been three years I've been coming for koinonia I can't even pay my transport don't worry the word of God is working the day the miracle will come not even your prayer will stop it God says it's too late when your mindset has built it now a day will come in one month you will see cars in koinonia you'll be like oh, it's a season it's not a season the, if the car is being given to you now your colleagues are saying my brother won't you buy a car don't worry don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere just calm down leave the issue of loan and stay with God take your Okada with honor and give God praise the day to come it will come in a grand style I assure you You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope. At your level, I was worse than how you look now. So you better encourage yourself and say, if I'm at this level and I'm already smiling like this, it means when I get to a level higher than where I am, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Number four. What's the third price? Is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and I add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of God is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of God is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards is is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding give it favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful 
nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will don muen call you because of your voice have you worked upon yourself what do you know about singing the truth is that many of us at least to an appreciable level we have discovered areas here and there in our lives but the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence everybody shout it after me say competence say it again competence let me tell you something i've learned about competence competence defies age gender tribal and racial um differences and, and all of and sentiments i have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from i've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields listen anything you are doing if you do not plan to be a leader in that field don't do it are we together i will never commit my energy to anything that i will not be a leader in whether it is ministry whether it is business you may start small but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field in the academia the professor collects the highest salary why because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it you may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker but if you have not risen to that level of competence you may never have the privilege of access make up your mind that i will be competent say it i will be competent say it again i must be competent the law of value your value when developed decide who pursues you your value when developed decides who pursues you mike mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward a problem is an invitation for a reward until there is a problem that you can solve i teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you when you are not valuable you will not be a friend to anybody write this down discover and develop problem solving skills discover and develop problem solving skills be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know i've said it again and again many people get angry when men of god are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of god are lazy people who just receive free money from people if they believe that men of god eat the church tithes and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses it may be true for some but it's not so for most men of god become blessed because they are offering value that the value is spiritual in context now i am teaching you is that true i'm reshaping your mind i'm adding value to you the system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value whether you sell it or give it free you are authorized to be rewarded are we together now you only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life whether financial and otherwise and you cannot see the value equivalent so when i look at a billionaire like bill gates i see the value equivalent that's why we don't harass him if i look at a criminal who is not offering any value yet his bank account 
is fat then i know that the equation does not balance before you ever criticize a blessed man examine the value now you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what is doing is valuable enough to bring reward but it still does not matter everybody say i will be valuable say it again i will be valuable i will be skillful become a master at something koinonia and wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if i ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now i'm not only a man of god and many other things but most people know me as a man of god and they may think that's all i am and that's all that i do there are many other aspects to my life but there is always a skill that opens the door that skill that brings you to the table of greatness then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting is that true yes you must be valuable now the oil in nigeria and africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we were offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our gdp necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world where you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you be valuable being valuable will drive shame out of your life I tell you this being valuable the Bible says study to show yourself approved it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed there is a relationship between ignorance and shame are we together there is a relationship there is a correlation between ignorance and shame those who are angry insulting every blessed person insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings their ability their skill their talent and to invest time resources and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field i've made up my mind that in everything i'm involved in i will be flawlessly competent it's a commitment i've made to myself and I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable. Become a master solution provider. There is no mystery about wealth. It's not a miracle. It's not magic. It's a system, a reward system of the kingdom. Remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you. It must be developed. Everybody say developed. There is a season of refining your value. One gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of God change my story yes God can change your story but the men of God or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value 
by the time you continue to give people informations that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, You mean it? I mean, that's that's he says, sir. This message is a, is a bestseller. And then the mem the person does not come. The moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you. Because they were never loyal to you. They are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation. And if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth, spiritually and otherwise, then there's no reason why they listen to you. I've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person, well, well just a daft. No, 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 no. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of labor, research, commitment. I'm committed to doing it. This is the key to remaining relevant. Are we together? You must be skillful. Write this scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself. He said, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one. But you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man, mm, when you find such a man, do what? He sees, he programmed his own promotion. When you find that man, this is the level of result that should be given to that man. Set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting. Trailblazing. That no, this is not competition. This is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocre. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, are you a Jew or you are this? You have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring, the ring in his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man 
authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of Egypt let's finish it two more verses and Pharaoh called Joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife Asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation God is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable God programmed that way not everybody will produce the same result but there must be a token a token a sign that you are going somewhere and Joseph went over the land of Egypt the last verse how old was he and Joseph was what this is somebody's lifetime achievement he did it at age 30 if you got born again at 30 you are behind time I teach on the graph of life you can get my message that's a sign that you need to catch up and when he stood before Pharaoh king of Egypt and he stood before Pharaoh king of Egypt and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt your competence can give God space to lift you your competence can give God space to lift you make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in name of Jesus I receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything I receive grace are you praying in the name of Jesus I declare I decree and I declare go ahead and pray Lord I will rise in business I set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of Jesus in my career I will rise to a managerial level I will not stop till I reach the apex I will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of Jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory I, I declare that I break through it if I need to take certifications I set myself to personal development if I need to upgrade myself in knowledge I receive grace if I need seminars and training I receive grace if I need to submit myself consciously for mentorship I receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience I will not waste my day again I will turn my laptop to a university I will turn my Android device to a university I take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business I find out the leaders in my field and I press to know what they know hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of Mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statement they always make they will continue to jay at you and say Saul killed 1,000 David killed 10,000 competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you Lord Jesus your word is changing me I receive grace 
Hallelujah. The fourth prize, and we'll be done for today. Please, I want to have everybody's attention because what I'm about to teach you is a very big secret. Most of you may think you know it, but I want you to listen to me with your spirit, listen with your heart. The price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life. The price of building quality relationships. Relationships are advantageous connections. Connections. Relationships are advantageous connections. The easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships. I've taught you this. I'm repeating it so that you will understand. The easiest way to be blessed in life, brothers and sisters, is through relationship. Relationships are powerful. Relationships are irrefutable. There is no champion without quality relationships. Relationships are currencies. They can buy anything money can buy. Anything money can buy, relationships can buy it. The only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it. That human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it. I've said it again. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not working in wisdom. Now, money is only one of many currencies. Relationship being the highest at the Keda. Second only to godliness and your spiritual connection. Let me tell you something. Of all the currencies that men use to purchase results in life, physical money, notes, currencies is the least of them. There are seven currencies. I hope that by God's grace, I'll teach it next year. Seven currencies we use to purchase results in life. Everything in life is bought. It's just that money is not the only currency. Relationship is a priceless currency. Higher than gold. Higher than the dollar. Learn this. God called Abraham alone. And Lot, who was related, went with him. That was the only thing Lot did. And he became stupendously wealthy. Relationships can determine the next course of your results. And lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime. Please, I want you to learn this. The presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success. Lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime. You are one quality relationship, underline quality. You are one quality relationship away from your next level of results. Believe me on this. You are one quality relationship away from the next level of your results. You know all of this already. My emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships, but to be able to guide us on principles. I've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding Two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives. There must be similarity. You must believe similar things about God, about life, about money, about family. It qualifies you to be friends. Second scripture. Very, very touching scripture. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. It tells us that he who desires friends... You must sow that seed. Proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest. Meaning that until you sow that seed, there is no harvest of relationship. It says a man that hath friends must first show himself what? Friendly. And trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother. Most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds. 
you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 read with me one to read he that walketh with the wise shall do what but a friend of foolish what will he get it didn't say foolish people don't have a future that's not what the bible is saying the bible says you are a product of your environment he that walks with the wise shall himself be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please write this down everyone relationships do not maintain themselves relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people say they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving you are going to read it. so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you believers are very very competitive people jealous people you bought this car i buy it too you bought this suit i buy it too if, if you know i'm not just saying it for koinonia alone but this is something i've observed this is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide especially in the african continent we are obsessed with the passion to prove points and so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this proverbs 27 verse 4 many of us fall sick being envious of people listen very very powerful description look up please it says wrath is cruel that means it's not good don't do it anger is outrageous but compared 
you know in comparison who is able to stand before envy in other words envy is worse than anger wrath is cruel anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envious people never get results in their lives they live their lives in bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already proverbs 27 verse 4 we'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy i take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no envy is sin it's not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and i'm not married you are envious this person i was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray Shabakato sekata. in the name of jesus i come against it satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the bible calls it ill speaking statistically you can go and check it the top reasons why relationships break give us titus chapter 3 verse 2 please and then proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19 avoid gossip backbiting speaking evil unfortunately and with all due respect to the body of christ for some reason the church in nigeria i don't know if it's because of our african background we are experts at gossip experts at backbiting experts at speaking evil to speak evil of no man are we there to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together you speak evil of people we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit i'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up i'll read it 
These six things does the Lord hate. So God hates it. These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination unto him. We're reading to 19. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imagination. There is such a heart. Feet that be swift in running into mischief. 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. And the last of them is what? He that soweth discord. He didn't say among men. Among who? You find them in every church and every ministry. Experts are joining the heads of nice people together. Hey, Jimmy, I, I wouldn't have told you, but I've, I've, do you know, have you noticed that every time Koinonia comes, there's a way Pastor Alpha looks at you. <laughs> I will just you about it later. It's devilish. It's devilish. It's devilish. You are sowing seeds of discord. There are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them. There are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced. Adam and Eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice. You must be careful. Third voices ruin quality relationships. How many of you God wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and said, sorry, you. how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord? Sorry, I, I overheard somewhere that you like this lady. Are you, are you blind? I just came to advise you. Are you blind? This lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to put those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always. You just see somebody pass and say, ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but no. Don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, we will cry before God. First for yourself and say, Lord, I'm guilty. I am very, very guilty. Are we together? Yes. Worship team standing to worship. I see how this guy is standing. That's the guy I'm telling you. Hey, you don't know. That guy, I saw him around that area yesterday. He likes it, lady. He likes it. What is your business? For heaven's sake, what is your business? Are we together? Yeah. What is your business? Gossip. Backbiting. Ill-spoken words. You just hear that somebody is rising. You say, who? Who is rising? No, I need to do something about it. Don't become like that. Ill-spoken words. The appetite. You see, every time you talk bad about people, I want you to remember that you are destroying God's creation. You must stop it. He put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying. When you tear down people and destroy them. How many people tear down men of God? You don't think about their churches. What happens to their members while you are destroying them? What happens when you are talking ill of a pastor? What happens when you are tearing him down? What happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife? Think of what happens to her reputation. It affects her leadership. Where experts are doing it. It's a habit that I trust that God will break from us. Because many of us, this is what drives friends from us. Come, Pastor Alpha. God brings your destiny helper. He holds your hand. In two weeks, in two weeks, everybody knows everything about you. Ah, I came to Apostle's house. I saw him counting dollars. <laughs> Don't, don't mind that quietness. Oh, apostle is rich. You think it's an information you are giving. And God is saying, you see, this person, you are not a candidate for my help. Carry your trouble and go away. And he said, ah, but God is going to help me. No. We have destroyed our lives 
destroyed opportunities how many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have it's an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself i beat my wife i just want you to know honestly and you see listen the thing about gossip and ill speaking please listen this is a lesson for all of us to learn the thing about gossip is it is like lost whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to including a child imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say hey, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and uh -uh it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love i don't care what your background is you will not be easily angered there are people who get angry very easily very easily bros how now you say me i'm 10 years older than you i am please don't think that because me on a very good day wouldn't you be saying money easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that 
the blessings that I seek to receive from the relationships God is bringing in my life is greater than any offense. Offense destroys. Because you see, when you are offended, one of the many ways you act is speech. And every time you speak with a heart of offense, usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it means that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense is an advice, it's an encouragement. The Bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended. Let me tell you, you are not a true human being. If you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day I do things that should get people offended every day an example is what I'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that I will not be offended How many men of God get offended and they can't preach? They get offended at home. They come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children. The kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family. So you know that this, is a, this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit. Offense makes you small. Offense makes you cheap. Offense reduces your worth. Let me tell you something about offense. Most of those who offend you, they know they offended you. The goal is that their joy is in your reaction. Most of those who offend, offend intentionally. But when you grow above it, you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now on your way home an angry driver an angry man something will happen that will offend you but you must make up your mind and say satan you're a liar i already see your hand i will not be offended say in the name of jesus i reject offense is god speaking to us number four how do we maintain relationships practice forgiveness practice forgiveness Mark chapter 11 verse 25 then Ephesians 4 32 please give it to us Mark 11 25 practice forgiveness I don't know one relationship including the one of you and God that can thrive without forgiveness it's not God you are forgiving God is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with God okay I forgive you God let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying, most prayer warriors miss this. Let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives. It's not all about demons. And when ye stand praying, what is the rule? Forgive, comma, if ye have ought against any, that your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. It's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts. Some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say, Father, don't you know that I'm human? And God says, really? It's like a small child that begs you for something. Then you give him and say, give back, and he refuses. That's exactly what we do. You can never live in this life without forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving. Forgiveness is giving. It is giving pardon and mercy. Forgiveness. A disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens forgiveness forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving if you are not a forgiver you are not a giver not forgiving 
is one way of manifesting greed it's not just refusing seed forgiveness but let me balance very quickly you don't forgive just to make peace forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness but the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it let me be very honest and let me balance forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance a willingness to turn away forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance it is useful to you let me show you what offense does um can i use someone sam please come watch this this is what offense does i want to move forward but i think sam is standing my way and so i'm trying to push him will i move forward holding him i'm trying to hold sam i can't move forward myself this is what forgiveness is he can be there not even deserving it but i release him so that i can move forward i can leave him and his trouble there if he accepts that he is wrong and turns then we make peace and we can work together if he refuses i still forgive so that i can move forward let me tell you the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended the person who was offended is the one who is most wounded it is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset so your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive as a leader people will offend you every day people will do wrong things every day you must forgive hallelujah everybody say i receive grace to forgive say i let go everyone i'm holding in my hands holding people hold them in your heart I will never forgive my mother except I may have said my own. And you can never receive blessing. I will never forgive my father for what my father has done. If I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that uh, what they call it now that brother he went out with me and broke and scattered my heart please forgive so that you can move forward forgive so that you can move forward turn it into prayer in one minute lord i'm tired of holding people down i release right now i let go that boss in the name of jesus i release my husband i release my wife i release my co-worker i release my business partner I release the man of God. I release my head of department. I release my escorts. I release the members in my department. I release Joshua Selman. Make sure you pray. I release everyone who has offended me. Because I want to move forward. I want to move forward. Practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake forgave us very quickly ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 okay ephesians 4 verse 32 is there and then give us luke chapter 6 verse 37 luke 6 37 let's hurry up luke 6 37 luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do i mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it Tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change. You have to incorporate it as part of that person's living. There are people, I wish I would tell you everybody around you will change. There are people who will not change. So you switch from forgiveness to tolerance. You accommodate that limitation in their life, factor it and build a system around it. Is God speaking to us? Yes. 
I have many friends, all kinds of friends. And just like me, they are very funny people. Everybody has all kinds of attributes. The same way I am to them too. But it takes tolerance. There are some things in me, unfortunately, may not change. Tolerance. You, don't you, Tine? I like everybody around me to talk. But say, I don't talk. You don't need forgiveness. What do you need? Tolerance. Or you, you talk too much. I just ask you a question. Where is, where is uh, my trouser? He said, uh, the other one, I didn't ask you about what happened. Where is my trouser, please? Tolerance. Your destiny helper may be a talkative. If you are tolerant to the talkativeness, then you receive the breakthrough. Everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you. If everybody was like me, the world would be a terrible place. You would think the world would be a nice place. No. You don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life. This world will be a sad place. <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping. What a world. I am so happy for people who are not me. They add flavor. I benefit from the joy of them not being me. You must have a high degree of tolerance. Colossians chapter 3. Please help us. 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 3. It's called forbearance. You must tolerate people. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, so also do ye. Forbearing one another. You have business partners, you will need forbearance. Are we together? You are in your office working, you need forbearance. In a ministry like this, you need forbearance. Everybody cannot be you. Brothers and sisters, learn this. Oh God, change them. Wonderful prayer. But they have their wills. If they don't change, does that mean you will not move forward? Tolerance. Number six. The sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved you maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship you must be a contributor there are parasitic relationships relationships are meant for mutual benefit maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life. No. Ejimi is my friend. He contributes greatly in my life. I contribute greatly in his life. So there is a basis for continuity. Are we together now? If you are not valuable to a relationship, that relationship's lifespan is very small. It will never. Please hear this. This is true for marriage, it is true for business, it is true for ministry. There are many people who complain and say, Joshua Selman doesn't want to be my friend, doesn't want to be this. And I say, no, no, I want to be your friend. It's just that I am passionate about value. Be a contributor. Money is not the only thing to contribute. Love, kindness, godliness. Are we together now? There are so many things to bring into a relationship. Not everybody is looking for money in a relationship. There are people who have conquered that realm. They need love. They need value. They need understanding. They need help. You must learn this. If you want a guy to come into your life, what value are you going to bring? I say, guy, what value are you going to bring? Even the church and Christ, truly speak, he doesn't need anything from us. But because of his love, he limited himself. To allow us space to be able to contribute something. That's why when we worship and praise him, is we 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 are not necessarily adding anything to him, but he has limited himself that way so that he can give us room for expression. Relationships must be mutually beneficial. If there are five people in a business and only two are running that business, they are the two who will be the closest of friends. The rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry. 
don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please i want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of god it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for god if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this i love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if i'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but i can't be close to you relationships are based on contributions i want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and you say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what i will get in as much as i have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of god as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season christ died for us proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships, not love, really, all kinds of relationships, and the ease with which they get offended. No, sir. If five people come into your life, not love relationship now necessarily, five people come into your life, none of them can stand two weeks. The problem is you, not them. Are we together? Hatred, stirred up strife, but love covereth. How many sins that means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love the secret to peace all kinds john 13 35 john 13 35 then give us first john 4 20 first john 4 20 john 13 35 john 13 verse 35 By this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a Christian name if ye have love not for God love for one another 
loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love God that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love God that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of love you one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself I cannot hate anybody in the house of God no impossible impossible truly speaking I'm not just saying it I live a very peaceful life <laughs> Apostle, why are you angry can you no I've been delivered I live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that i love them with all my heart i love the leaders they know it i'm lavish about it i love them with all my heart how could i ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart this is why some of us never get the anointing this is why many of us never command results our hearts are full of hatred there is always one bad story to say no first john 4 verse 20 and then we round up first john 4 verse 20 god has spoken to us tonight if a man say even if his name is joshua selman if joshua selman says i love god like many christians say and hated his brother he didn't say hated it didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did it just said if he hated his brother please read on if you're a christian what is he he didn't say he's an angry person and god understands that person is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen how can he love god that he had not seen church we must not only love jesus we must love ourselves more pastors who en we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving god and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why i honor the lord for the ministers around i mean reverend dr tende is here god bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time i see them come visit like this i am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them, how are you? How is the work? The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. There are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. And say, Has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you but when you had privilege the number he had then that you had you did not invest in it and now he has changed his line only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbling and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and said what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i say you can imagine two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look i have bishop oedipo's number see bishop david oedipo let me call and you call he says see all these arrogant men of god i will not pick if i'm him no sir it's not because i hate you they are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them please don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to a little prayer i'm not talking of money a little prayer man of god how are you sir just to find out mommy how are you daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it 
even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have say but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just list it bless you and i say what just like that There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you, my mother has come again, no, honestly. Uh, my father has come again, no. my sister. Remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. No. You must invest in relationships. You must love. Brothers and sisters, I stand by the integrity of God's word and I tell you this, if you practice these things before last koinonia, it would have changed your life. There are some of you, this is what you need. This is the revelation you need to enter the next level. It's not like the job cannot come. There are many people now that admission will start. You're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people. Sir, I remember it's me that sent you CV and says, is it because I'm coming for Koinonia and you are seeing me like that? You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, I, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for project. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call, write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you. Because when a man loves you, everything he has loves you too. If a millionaire loves you, his money loves you too. An anointed man loves you, his anointing will love you. There are anointings that reject people. Yes. That's why people don't receive. We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the Lord. And say Lord. The answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you. Or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Are you praying? Are you praying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to pray. I've listed these areas. You know the areas where you honestly need to flog it out with God. In the next one minute. Please swallow your pride and cry to God and say, I obtain mercy. I obtain mercy. Lord, I have not paid the price to know you. I am lazy spiritually and otherwise. I have not committed myself to pressing into the things of God. There's too much distraction in my life and I make up my mind that I will change from today. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've not committed myself to transiting mentally. I'm still carrying age old ideas that are destroying me, ideas that are responsible for my pain, ideas that are responsible for the misery in my life. I'm a product of my mindset. I have, by a wrong mindset, driven good people in my life, driven good opportunities in my life. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. No more laziness. From tonight, I commit myself to personal development. Lord, I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. Lord, I receive grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. 
grace to be excellent grace to be competent finally pray for relationships Lord all the areas that you have touched tonight I receive grace I declare that I'm free the Bible says he who the son of man sets free is free indeed I declare that I'm free from offense I'm free from bitterness I'm free from gossiping but biting ill-spoken words against people I only seek the good of another in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost I let go every offense I make up my mind that I'm pressing to the place of destiny and in the name of Jesus no power of hell will stop me hallelujah one last prayer point father every dimension of result I should have entered that lack of observing these truths have kept me I declare that your mercy reopens that door for me go ahead lift your voice and pray I decree and I declare the mercy of God again I decree and declare the mercy of God again I decree and declare the mercy of God again are you praying I decree and declare relationships that I've lost because I did not this understanding I decree and declare by the mercy of God they are reopened business opportunities financial opportunities ministerial connections strategic relationships connections that would have lifted me bailed me out of trouble stop shame from my life hallelujah I won't harm you with words from my mouth I love you I need you too one more time I won't harm you with words from my mouth I love you I need you to survive it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me I need you to survive Lord I stand before your people and we declare connecting with all those who are following from the nations of the earth and Lord we declare that we are ready to put these truths to work in the name of Jesus we lay our pride tonight we humble ourselves before you the Lord of glory you have brought your word to lift us the Bible says he sent forth his word we receive the sent word into our hearts we commit ourselves to applying the changes that are required and Lord we declare that your grace and your mercy will back us up let there be results in our lives we decree and declare that between now and the end of this year let our lives command strange results in the name of Jesus Christ all of the limitations in our lives that grant Satan and demon spirits access to lift and destroy us we declare by the blood of Jesus that they are closed and closed forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen everyone please keep standing you're here tonight and um, whilst you were hearing me speak the Holy Spirit was speaking to you and saying that you need to make your ways right or especially you are here and you have discovered that offense is eating you up it has killed your spiritual life you literally backslid just because of offense and bitterness and hatred and you're finding it difficult to let go you are here you want to give your life to Jesus you want to make up your life you want to take away these things and say Lord I need to start afresh if you are here inside outside any of the overflows please I want you to make your way very quickly we have one minute for you wherever you are make your way to the front thank you Jesus someone is responding to this call God bless you someone is responding to this call quickly please if you're coming make way to Jesus go ahead make your way Lord I want to make it right with you tonight I can't live my life like this I came for koinonia I may deceive others but I cannot deceive myself Lord I'm ready to lay everything down everything down go ahead God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you you're still coming outside please double up and come double up and come those online connect with us wherever you are and pray the prayer as I lead God's people to pray please come direct them 
direct them God bless you I see people coming make your way to the front very quickly hallelujah please come quickly I'm about to lead them to pray thank you most of you uh, have given your life to Christ you are rededicating your life some of you are giving your life to Jesus for the first time doesn't matter what category you are part of please mean this with all your heart mean this with all your heart Jesus is here and let this be a new beginning for you say in the name of Jesus I lay aside every offense I lay aside every bitterness every anger every unforgiveness I declare tonight that Jesus is Lord of my life I hand over my life and everything about me to Jesus I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight I am a changed person from tonight the love of God dwells in me the Spirit of God dwells in me no more bitterness no more hatred in the name of Jesus the power of sin and Satan is broken over my life forever in Jesus name Lord Jesus thank you for this one some of them are handing their lives totally to you and some of them are making up their minds to let go every offense and everything that has held them I decree and declare that honor their decisions and I pray that from tonight your life will skyrocket to a new dimension of achievement in the name of Jesus you will love Jesus and hold on to him never to replace him by anything and anyone in Jesus name I pray amen and amen thank you so much for making this decision please follow the lady waving her hands she's smiling at you and you have a few details and you'll be back to your seat God bless you and thank you very much let's honor them koinonia thank you so so much we believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore ENI. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you